Hey golf people, in this episode we're taking a look at the clubs that Ricky Fowler is playing and he's won over one million dollars out on tour with these golf clubs. Now they're not the itty bitty little blades you expect Ricky to play. No, they're actually a cavity backed semi game improvement club for a player. These are the Cobra King Tour. It's actually got a little insert back there that's going to help with feel, with trajectory, and with a bit of distance. These clubs, I think, are simply incredible, although they are not perfect. So we will cover the one downside of these clubs during today's video, but I'm gonna walk you through what I like about these clubs and what Ricky must like too. Here is the four iron down at a dress. Now you've got that cavity, but you don't see any of that cavity when you're looking down at this club. Nice, thin player profile there. All the technology hiding behind. Here's the seven iron down at a dress, guys. As you can see, it's a nice, thin top line. Not as thin as a blade, uh, definitely not as thin as a blade, and definitely a little longer than what Ricky was playing before with his Cobra blades. But these definitely have a little bit more player look to them, thinner top line, just a tiny little bit of offset here with the seven iron. Now let's talk a little bit about lofts of these clubs. These kind of sit in what I think is the Goldilocks range of lofts. You've got your more pressed loft Cobra Forge Techs, and then you've got your much more traditionally lofted Cobra blades and cavity backs there. So these are actually perfect. At the seven iron, 32 degrees. At the four iron, you've got 22 degrees, which works well if you're gonna put a 19 degree or 18 degree hybrid in there. And then at the pitching wedge, you've got 44 degrees, which I think is great because I carry a 50 degree gap wedge. Most people have 48, 50 degree gap wedges these days. If it's too strong, you're at 42, then you've got a much bigger gap to fill. You actually need to add another club. So I think the lofts work well with these. Now, even though these aren't super pressed lofts, the distances I was getting was really surprising out on course. And on a number of occasions, I actually flew greens. And I totally was not expecting to do that. Here's one example. That looks pretty good. Pins back there. Uh-oh, it's too far. It's too far. These things have too much pop. Now let's talk about forgiveness with these clubs. I think they set at about an eight out of 10, which is really good for this style of club. Here's a great example where I've got a nine iron in my hand. I've got 138 yards and I hit one right off the toe. Ooh, it came out so nice. Is it gonna catch the green? It did and I think it's long actually. I think I just blasted that pass. Now, you may be able to see it here, but there's the mark on the club. I hit that towards the toe. It wasn't here in the middle where it should be. It was a little bit toe side where many mere mortals tend to miss. And I didn't think I lost any distance there. Very forgiving. It came off just a little left of target of what I had, but it seemed to carry just fine. And like I said, I think we're long. So from what I saw, there are plenty of pop with these clubs and plenty of forgiveness to boot. Now it's one thing to be forgiving in those higher number irons, but when you get down into the four and five irons, the part of the set that's the hardest to hit, that's where these clubs really shocked me in terms of forgiveness. Here I am laying up on a par five with a four iron. I'm trying to get into a real specific spot so I can attack the pin. And I hit a shot that was severely, severely off the toe. Oh boy, that was off the toe for sure for sure and it finished maybe 10 yards of where I want it to be but in the perfect position it got up in the air even though I hit it way off the toe I don't know if you can see that that is severely severely off the toe still got up in the air still went in the exact same direction I wanted it to go basically perfect other than we lost a few yards because it wasn't good contact. But I didn't get my kind of normal hook and dive. I thought that was probably the most impressive shot I hit out on course throughout all my testing. And here's one more pitching wedge. I hit it super thin. I had 115 yards. And I've got 115 to the hole here. The pin's in a tough spot though. I'm gonna take a pitching wedge here. Beautiful height. And that is center of the green, guys. Well, that's a good start for a set of irons. I actually hit it just a little thin too, but man, 
having that weight down at the bottom, it's gonna give you a little bit more forgiveness. So I think these clubs absolutely shine in terms of forgiveness. Let's talk about control here. That is gonna be one of the major benefits of a more players type of irons. You're going to have much more control of the club. Specifically, I'm talking about trajectory control, distance control, as well as stopping power. All that kind of goes into the control of a club. Here's a great test of that. It's actually my first hole of the day on this particular test. I've got 96 yards. I really don't have any business hitting a pitching wedge, but because I'm testing these irons, I went pitching wedge instead of like a sand wedge. And I just wanted to see if I could keep it under the wind here and see if we could get the distance right. We've got 96 yards. I've got the pitching wedge in my hand. Now this is gonna be more of a 120 club, but what I'm testing here is for control and for spin. So we're not taking a full swing. We're gonna see how we can get this to stop and we can get this to go in the right direction. <laughs> Wish me luck. Low trajectory there, which is nice. Hit right in front on the apron, took one hop and stopped. We've got our first birdie putt of the day. Pretty good for my first attempt. And again, it really speaks volumes about the control of these clubs. Now, another place that you're looking to have a club perform when you're talking about a player's iron is going to be in workability. That's your ability to move the ball right or left. And I found these clubs to do this exceptionally. Here is a great example where I'm in a terrible eye off the fairway in some dirt. And I've still got to really wrap this thing around a tree and keep the height as well. And here's what I did with that. Got a little fade on it, which is what I was playing there. That looks very freaking good. We got another birdie putt. Here's where it landed. I mean, that's pin high as it gets. Well, guys, being able to shape a shot is what a player's iron is all about. So not only are we getting forgiveness, but when you got forgiveness and you've got workability, that's the hallmark of a really great golf club. Again, I think the trajectory of these clubs, even though they're not completely traditional lofts, they're definitely not press lofts, and that's going to help you get the ball up in the air quicker. It's also gonna help for that stopping power we talked about. 131, I've got a pitching wedge. I've gotta carry a lot of water, and I've gotta get it up over these trees in order to get there. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, that felt great. Is it enough? Yes. Guys, right here, right here is the pitch mark. So talk about stopping power. This is what you don't get out of the really pressed loft clubs. Now again, it's one thing to get trajectory with pitching wedges, nine irons, that sort of thing, but it's a whole other thing to get great trajectory out of those lower clubs in the bag, the four or five irons. Here's a five iron, again, in the fairway. Oh, it feels nice. <laughs> It gets up in the air really high, guys. So those are the overwhelming positives of these clubs. As I mentioned in the beginning, these aren't the perfect clubs and there is one negative. And it's kind of an interesting one, one I haven't really experienced too, too often. These clubs, even though they are forged clubs, I would not say that they're super buttery soft feeling. I'd say they're a little bit more rigid, a little bit more stiff. It's not the cast feel by any means. It's not as stiff and rigid as that, but definitely not something like a Mizuno or a Srixon or one of these Japanese forged clubs. So the feel's gonna be a little bit different. It takes a little bit of getting used to. The other thing I would say is that the feel sometimes is deceiving in some ways. A couple times I was hitting shots out on the course and I hit them thinking that I hit it in the middle. And what really happened was I looked down at the club and I saw where the grass was in the grooves and it was much more off the toe. Even though it felt like it was in the middle, it was in the toe. Which again, speaks volumes about the forgiveness of these clubs. But if you really wanna know where on the club face you're striking the ball, you might have a more difficult time than with other forged type players irons. Still real good. I wouldn't consider it bad, but I'd, I'd consider it more of a, like a six out of 10. But again, I'm willing to trade some of that feel for the real great forgiveness I was seeing out on course. But I want to let you know about some of the negatives of these clubs. All right, lastly, let's talk about who these clubs are for. Cobra claims these clubs are for your scratch golfers all the way up to seven handicaps. And I'd actually extend that range, kind of shift it a little bit. I would say 
somebody at a four or five level like me, all the way up to maybe as much as 12, I think would get a benefit from these clubs, especially if you've got the distance already and that's not something you're looking for. If you are looking for distance, better to move up into the Forge Tech category. And if you've got the distance and you're looking maybe for more feel, then you're looking probably at the cavity backs, the muscle backs, or even a combination set of the two, which that video will be coming soon, by the way. But great options here from Cobra. Are you considering any of these options? I'd love to know down below. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe. And if you're considering golf clubs, and again, maybe you need some more distance, here is my video featuring the Cobra Forge Tech. Some really, really fantastic clubs, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you back here real soon on another edition of Let's Play through.